So this lesson is the first start of partial derivatives. There are four pages to this handout. So we'll do one page per video. It'll help a lot. So again, uh, we're going to talk about partial derivatives. This uh, first half talks about theory and understanding. In other words, kind of comparing it to what we already know about a derivative. And then second one is how to find them algebraically. One thing you're going to want to do is review your derivative rules because we're going to use the same rules. Nothing changes. It's just that there's a little extra trick to this in order to get it correct. All right. So this picture right here is the graph of f of x, y equals 16 minus x squared minus y squared approximately just in the first octant. So let's take a look at what the partial derivatives mean when you have a 3D surface. So you can see this point P here, and we're actually going to say that point P is 1, 3, 6. So this will be 1 here, and this will be 3 here. And that's not quite to scale, but it does what we need to for the purpose of the problem. Now at the point P, I have two lines that just touch the surface at one point. So when you have a line that touches the surface at one point, it's called a tangent line. So this tangent line, right here is parallel to the x-axis. And this tangent line here is parallel to the y-axis. So if I'm standing at the point P and I face towards positive x, my tangent line will look like this. Now that's what we call a partial derivative in the direction of x. And if I'm facing this direction towards positive y, the slope of that line will be the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now notice that both slopes are not the same. You can't expect that. If you're on a hillside, imagine standing on a hillside like this, and no matter what direction you face, the slope of the hill will change. Now what partial derivatives do is it just points you in one direction, gets rid of all of the other directions that are available, and says, okay, if you point in this direction where x is positive, the partial derivative is what you're calculating with respect to x. And if I point this to where, direction, I'm going to be calculating the derivative with respect to y. Now we call them partial because there's an infinite amount of them and we're just going to take a part of them. But it's still considered derivative, slope of a tangent line at a point. But what the partial derivative does is specify direction, only two directions. All right, so let's, let me write down a couple notes here. Hopefully you had written notes in what I just said. <laughs> um, if you didn't, go back and kind of write down notes about what I just said. So here's a couple other notes. Number one, the slope of those tangent lines are not the same. Slopes of the tangent lines I know it takes me quite a while to write, and I should be talking, but, you know, you'll live. Slopes of the tangent lines are not the same, and that's, again, very important to understand. So you have to specify what direction you're looking in order to talk about the slope in that direction. And let's talk about the signs, S-I-G-Ns, of the slopes. So if I take a look at P, this one's a little easier to see. Um, I have the Z-axis and the Y-axis. If I look at P, how it kind of extends here, I start high on the z-axis and end low, so that means as y increases, z decreases, so that's a negative slope. Similarly here for the x-direction, I start high on z and I end low on z. So I would say by the picture, both slopes are negative. Now you're probably saying, why do we care? Well, what we're going to do is a bunch of exercises and we're going to make sure that um, the answers are compatible with each other. So in other words, I'm looking at this saying, well, both of my slopes should be negative. That means that when I do work later, they should be negative. So when I talk about the way to talk about or speak about partial derivatives, let's look at that. Kind of, I'm not going to say vocabulary, it's just the way that you say the way that you say things when you want to mention a partial derivative. So partial derivative is really the slope of a tangent line
in either one or the other, but either the x direction or the y direction. Now, you have to be able to specify that when you write something down on a piece of paper. And we'll show you that notation in just a second. So if I talk about the slope in the x direction, or I want to say to you, oh, let's talk about the slope in the x direction. Instead of saying that, we say the partial of f or z, depending on how your function is given to you, with respect to x. That's how I would say. What's the partial of f with respect to x? What's the partial of z with respect to x? So what I'm saying to you is, all right, we're going to look in the x direction and look at the slope of the surface. Then similarly, the slope in the y direction would be quoted as saying partial of f, and again, or z, depending on how your function is given to you, with respect to y. Good. Let's talk a little bit about notation. We move this up a little bit. So if I compare our old notation with our new notation, it's important to kind of see how it's similar and how it's different. So the old notation, when I want to say, oh, I want to take the derivative of y with respect to x, uh, assuming that our independent variable is x and our dependent variable is y, this is a way that we used to write it. It's the same idea, the change in y over change in x, but this just represents a really small change in y. So a small change in x creates a small change in y. That's the Calc 1 version. Now the new version has slightly different notation. You actually use what we call a script D, and it's, it's like a curvy D. So I would write the partial of Z with respect to Y. That's how I would write it. Now they look like twos if you're not careful, but you can't make up your own notation here. Just learn how to write a script D, because when you're writing homework or you're writing a problem for someone to look at, this means something very different than this. If you're writing this, they're expecting one type of derivative. If you're writing this, you're expecting another type. So make sure that you use the script D. This is not an option here. The other one is a partial of Z with respect to, oh, I used a Y there, I'm sorry. Um, I'll put an X here. Partial of Z with respect to Y, the partial of Z with respect to X. So the numerator, just the same, is representing the change in Z, a small change in Z. And the denominator is telling you which way to look. So again, you want to think like Calc 1, a small change in the dependent variable depending on which one. creates a small change in the dependent var in the independent variable. So I'm just going to say TES, a small change in Z, just like derivatives have always done. So here's some other notation that you'll probably find much more pleasing. Most students do. Other notation, so if I compare, if I'm given a function in terms of z equals something, I'm going to use this one, partial z with respect to x. Now, if I'm given a function in terms of f of xy, such as our original function was, f of xy, I would use this notation, and this is a nice notation, f sub x of xy. So that's how you would talk about it. And then similarly for y, partial z with respect to y, f sub y of xy. So again, the x's tell you what direction, the y's tell you to go to the other direction. Let's go on to page two.